Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I wish to devote the bulk, the bulk of my speech to dealing with the decision by the Treasury to withdraw duty-free shopping in this country and VAT rebates, the so-called VAT res, or some in the popular press have dubbed it the tourist tax. Um, I fully support the Chairman of the Select Committee, the Treasury Select Committee, in his uh, call for a comprehensive reassessment of this matter. And indeed, in their hearing on the 1st of December, the OBR said, given the policy ha has its highest possible uncertainty rating, it also said, it went on to say, it had no confidence in the Treasury numbers, that HMRC had no data of its own on the cost of VAT res, HMRT was wrong to assume that introducing a 20% tax would have no impact on visitor behaviour, it had assumed a price in an activity of 1.9, and finally that there had been no consideration of the knock-on impact on associated sectors such as hotels or taking into account any falls in VAT from fewer and shorter trips from wealthy visitors from this country. Mr Deputy Speaker, we must be crazy to want to deter wealthy visitors from abroad coming here to stay in our um, hostelries and from spending a lot in our shops. There is a common perception that this only affects uh, Oxford Street and Bond Street. In fact, as I said to the Honourable Member to Gordon, it affects the entire United Kingdom. It will affect companies like Mulberry, Burberry, churches, uh, Johnson's of Elgin and his constituents, and in fact, the whisky industry in Scotland. And that is losing jobs. It is estimated, as he said, up to 40,000 jobs can be lost by this decision all around the UK because it will affect regional airports, it will affect manufacturing in Blythe, in Yorkshire, Somerset, and in high value shopping areas such as Edinburgh, Dundee, London, Manchester, and Leeds. So I really call on the Treasury to think very hard about this decision. Because even if I am wrong and the Honourable Member for Gordon is wrong, that it's not going to cost 40,000 jobs, but it's going to cost even half that, 20,000 jobs. The decision that it's put in its red book in the budget, that this may cost, and the industry doesn't think it will, half a billion pounds, is chicken feed compared to the loss of those jobs. On the second part of my speech, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'd just like to talk to my own constituency. In Sirencester, which is the biggest town in my constituency, 41 shops have closed or are about to close. In all of my small town centres, half a dozen shops are going, to, are going to close because of the COVID virus. That's about 60 shops, at least in my constituency, that are going to close because of the COVID virus. Now, as I said in a question in the House last week, I call upon the Minister, all tiers of government, central government, local government, to come together to have a massive exodus onto our high street when it's COVID safe to do so. This can be done by a range of measures and my right honourable friend was quite right and we are pleased that the government has put so much money into our high street through the town's fund but we also want other measures such as car parking, broadband and rates reform. Thank you Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm Michelle Lambus.